Hey there, everybody. You are tuning into the Water Trio. So I'm here with my lovely friends and colleagues, Kelly, Alicia, and myself. And we are here to, I guess, deliver you some of the insights around the astrology of week beginning September 30. So how are you both? Fill us in. What's happening? I don't even know. I feel like the day is just getting started. We're recording at a different <laughs> time of day today. So we are. Uh, I'm liking it, but I'm just, I'm like just doing this right now, if that makes sense. <laughs> we got Kelly up early in the morning. <laughs> you did. We did. And Which, it's daylight hours here in Australia. Yes. So we might still everybody. hear some chickens. They yes, might be out. The chickens are always welcome. Yes. We did. We were like, oh, the chickens. We haven't heard the chickens for a while. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, the week beginning September 30. So let's get cracking, as we would say. Oh, there there's the chickens. There you go. <laughs> Fred's agreeing with you. He's like, let's go, yeah, Cass. Let's get, yeah. <laughs> let's, get, let's get cracking, as we would say here in Australia. So um, I think it might have been you, Kel, that was going to hit us up with the Venus Pluto to start Yeah, the week. I think that's first cab off the rank. So I've got Tuesday, October 1st, Venus Correct. at 20 Libra Square, uh, Pluto at 20 Capricorn. I'm like, I've got to block it against Pluto. I know where Venus <laughs> is, but trying to avoid Pluto. Um, so is that the, I haven't done all my um, detailed prep. So, oh, yeah, same day for you guys in Australia because it's yeah. very early. So Tuesday for everyone. So Venus square Pluto, this is a really interesting aspect in that it is, it's like lifting the lid on that box of secrets uh, to do with desire, to do with trust, to do with loyalty, to do with intimacy. Venus and Pluto together is like, I want depth, I want intensity, I want honesty, but it's a square aspect. So there's like, there's a, a little bit of friction or a little bit of adjustment here that you might have thought that you had loyalty or an agreement with someone and they're actually saying maybe that it's not quite working for them or they want to tweak the agreement or the contract that you might have. And this could be happening in a personal relationship, in a professional partnership, even with family, because Pluto is always going to highlight power dynamics. So it's going to mm -hmm. an aspect like this, like sort of kicks up you know, where you might feel that you don't have the power or the influence that you want, or you might feel like somebody else has got an excessive amount of control over you or is influencing you in a way that you're not super comfortable with. And I'm sort of veering into that. This could be a little bit of friction, a little bit more challenging because of the square quality. Venus is really strong though in Libra. So she's in a good position to negotiate here. So one of the ways I think the early part of this week kind of triggers our lives is that it brings an invitation to renegotiate or discuss something that is doesn't quite sit right with you. You know, Venus is not, Venus in Libra doesn't want to rock the boat. She doesn't want to upset other people. She's very comfortable, you know, biting her tongue and keeping the peace. But I think with Pluto, there'll be something that is just either too important um, or affecting you in such a deep way that you kind of can't just let it go. And the topics that I think are really quite charged whenever Pluto is active are any topic to do with money. So like the money power control dynamic. So are you in a situation where your financial position is affecting your choices uh, or vice versa? You know, maybe you've got a lot of money and you're throwing that financial weight around, not realizing that you're being a little bit controlling. Or maybe you're in a situation where you don't feel you can have a voice because you're not contributing as much financially as someone else. I'm not saying that's what it should be. I'm saying you should have an equal voice regardless of the financial piece, but just to be aware that money could be a trigger issue. And the other topic, of course, Venus Pluto is sex and sexual intimacy. So for some people, they're gonna there's a bit of friction. They're gonna be like, yeah, there was a bit of like heat and disagreement, and that was kind of arousing, and this has been great. Um, but for other people, it's going to be like, we're just clashing on this. You know, a square aspect is this 90 degree. It's like a T square or coming to a T intersection when you're driving. And I always say, if you both, if both planets trying to go forward at once, there's going to be a crash. And the adjustment is, are we letting the Pluto power piece run the show? Or are we looking to try and discuss or renegotiate? So there is an increase of fairness here. So... Yeah, that's probably a lot. What do you guys think about this one? <laughs> this is a big, <laughs> yeah. this is a big 
juicy <laughs> aspect to start the week. Yeah, totally. And I loved what you said about, you know, Venus, this is the first time actually that Venus has made any aspect to Pluto in a long time where she's had any dignity, you know, because we had her back in Virgo where she's not comfortable at all making a trine. And then, you know, during the whole June, July crazy in Cancer, you know, she still didn't have that much dignity then either. So I feel like the conversations, the the deep, honest conversations that need to be had can be done in a way that is fair for everybody at the moment. And it's like that, you know, I think we were talking about this on our WhatsApp conversation, being willing to be brave um, but coming to the party with the deep inner musings that you have to share with somebody else. So it brings a quality, it, it brings a real true power dynamic. I mean, I know in my past relationships where the power has been imbalanced in the relationship, either because I'm putting the partner up on a pedestal or they're putting me, there's it's, it's uncomfortable because you're always questioning, well, do I have enough power? Do I have enough say? Can I say what I want or will that person leave? Or, or why is that person not valuing themselves? Is there something that I need to know about them that they're hiding? or that they're not thinking well enough in. So it is that time to really share of yourself if you can and share deeply with those that you trust with Mm. Pluto involved so that a new level of intimacy can be reached. And, yeah, I just feel like there is this, you know, Venus is always charming and diplomatic. So the words will come out right if you trust them. You know, this is getting close to speaker, isn't it? Or is it? It's close. Yep. Yeah. So there is that kind of trust that everything will come in out in the end. Speakers are fixed, uh, a fixed star at 23 degrees of Libra. So that will kind of add that feeling of it will come out well in the end. Um, if, if you just kind of be willing to bear your soul with this. What about you, Cass? Um, what are my thoughts? Well, um, you can come up, mate. We've got our <laughs> the leg is kind of like meowing mass, if you can hear him in the background. <laughs> our, our little water trio man. Um, yeah, I mean, Venus square Pluto, I mean, I feel this, it might be that point where the gloves come off for Libra a little bit, where she's like, yeah, I've had enough of doing it this way. It's got to start coming this, like going in the other direction. If things are going to work, if things are going to progress, if they're going to move forward, it's like, well, you know, as we talked about in the last episode around the equinox and, you know, Libra being a highlighted piece moving forward, it's like, well, those scales can't continually be in balance. And it's her just, you know, maybe like doing her Judge Judy thing and just putting that gavel down and going, uh, enough's enough. Um, this is my line in the sand. This is what I'm prepared to compromise on or negotiate about. And this is what I'm not. So let's, you know, work together as a team and do it my way or, you know, we go the other way type of thing. So I think this can be, um, you know, quite empowering for Venus um, and those Venus topics um, because she is in her position of dignity. But also, and coming from that place, you know, she will still compromise. She will do her, you know, bitch crafting, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. But there will be like this inner strength coming through with Venus where where you thought I might have been pushed over, where you thought I might have been bullied. I'm not going to be that person anymore. And so it's kind of like, um, you know, and, and Pluto ultimately does want to get to the truth of the matter, what lies underneath. But there might be that little bit of tension or friction where push comes to shove and it, the push wasn't as easy as what you thought it was or what it was going to be so it might just be a little bit of that like square dynamic before you kind of can you know get to the bottom of things there but I think this is going to be a kind of like almost a moment of reckoning for Venus where she will really just put her foot down about something so see what happens let us know how it goes for you in the comments below is it a money thing is it a relationship thing is it a just finding your voice thing uh we're always curious to hear what that's like for you uh and so on the pluto darker you know truth telling themes i think uh we're over to you leash with uh correct with the mercury and scorpio scorpio 
Yes, yes. And of course, the Your Scorpio domain? is going <laughs> to. It is. Although my Mercury is not in Scorpio, surprisingly, no, like all my other personal quite, planets. You're quite familiar yes. with Scorpio territory, right? <laughs> yeah. So, look, this is a real, you know, this is a real chance to dive deep again and to kind of get in and underneath things. I always love that thought of the scorpion, which it feels safest in the deep, in, in the darker places. A scorpion in the desert to escape the heat of the sun will bury under rocks. And so there is that feeling mentally of, of burying down, of, of trying to get to the core of things, trying to get to the truth of things. Um, it's a brilliant time for research and really putting your mind to something that you need to delve below the surface of and, and get in underneath. And it has that sense of what is it inside me that needs to be spoken outwards? Where do I kind of like have to look internally and then give voice to, you know, wherever Mercury goes, it's like a, it's like a megaphone. So it's really going to bring a voice to that area of your chart that Scorpio rules. Um, and that's usually quite a, quite an intense place or a deep place, a place of pressure. So sometimes it's like by speaking it out and speaking it out in a safe way, we can really help relieve the pressure of what's going on inside. A bit like a valve on a pressure cooker. You know, when you're able to talk and connect with somebody, again, someone who you trust, you know, it's not always safe to have these deep musings with people that might go off and, and use them for the wrong the wrong reasons. But yeah, find someone and, and share that part of you, you know, where you may be feeling hurt or wounded or where you may be feeling a bit of shame or guilt about yourself. Um, yeah. And it, it's, um, it's kind of, you know, it's now in the sign where it's going to go retrograde again. Um, it'll still be a while off what three, three and a half weeks before it does go retrograde, but yeah, it's, it's getting into that territory now as well. So what are you guys thinking about this? Um, I mean, I guess I always think with Mercury going into Scorpio, it's a great opportunity to take a more reflective stance and to start to maybe give voice or at least put into words internally some of what is often maybe overlooked, like to get into some of those deeper, more meaty topics. Um, I quite like the Mercury and Scorpio period. I do have Mercury in a water sign in my chart. So I, I love the whole deep and meaningful. Let's talk about all of those raw, real, you know, feelings where, where is the things that have hurt you aware of the things from the past that have really affected you. Uh, and I, do, I think, you know, one of the really important keys, which you mentioned Leish is that Mercury is going to spend, I think it's like two and a half months in Scorpio. So mm. because it is going to retrograde towards the end of October, which means instead of just up normal two to three weeks of Mercury, like doing a little bit of the sign and then on to the next thing, this really is a deep dive. And yeah, definitely think about your own birth chart and where Scorpio is for you and the review and the reassessing or just going deeper on those topics. But I'm, I'm really intrigued as to how our general conversations and discussions are going to go into sort of more open, honest, or even just deeper territory where, where you know, Scorpio is a Mars rule sign. So it's not always going to be happy and easy conversations, but it's like saying what needs to be said, because getting that out there is just more helpful for everyone. What about yeah, you, Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't really have a great deal to sort of add to, to you know, the general topics of Mercury and Scorpio, but I also think that, um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say this is an overthinking type of placement, but it can definitely be an overbrooding type of placement mm -hmm. where, you know, something can be said or you could hear something and you can stew over it for a really long time and, um, and I think that's when, like, if you are one of those broody type of people or if you are a bit of an overthinker, you know, you can always find holes or loopholes in the story when you've got Mercury and Scorpio. Um, you know, so if you – it's just, like, be honest up front because, like, there's just no, like, way of escaping um, any type of, you know, 
uh, like holes in the story kind of thing. So it is definitely a, a time to really bring it out. And it might be those like really deeper things within yourself or with it, or that you can see with somebody else and you just go, you know, hey, mate, like out with it, like come clear, come, come, you know, get honest with things because sometimes we can also glaze over stuff. So, you know, Mercury and Scorpio, it's a long time. So um, this time as we had with Cancer, as we had with Pisces. So we are back into that kind of murky, watery, mercury type of territory where Mercury doesn't really like being in water signs too much. So it is going to be a little bit like muddy and a little bit stagnant and a little bit slow in some respects, you know, as you know, Mercury moves into Scorpio. So yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And Uh, one thing about the scorpion as well is that it will sting itself to death rather than be eaten by a predator. And I think that's one thing like Mm. what you were saying, Cass, about the brooding. It's like often we brood on ourselves and the role we played and and what we might have done. So if that's happening, find a really good sounding board person and just go, hey, does this sound normal to you? Like just make sure you get yourself out of your own head so you're not exactly. going around in Scorpio circles in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think I don't want to put words into this person's mouth, but a dear friend on Twitter, if it's who I'm thinking of, talks about Scorpio as skew-pio and he talks about how Scorpio does have a tendency to kind of see things from a little bit of a slanted or a skewed perspective because there is the Scorpio tendency is to be quite ruminating or broody and we never do that what you're talking about <laughs> so, so true so okay, true spoken from the horse's mouth from our super Scorpio leash so I think, yeah, there's sort of two things, isn't there? It's like you don't want to be an over-brooder, but if you don't mm. normally do that self-reflective thing, then this can be an opportunity yep. to do that. Um, yep, totally. But to be aware of not skewing things so that you're feeling attacked when you're not actually being attacked or you're feeling you've made, you've attacked someone else when actually you haven't kind of mm. thing. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It yep. comes back to that classic Brene Brown, the story you're telling yourself in your head You know, like it can really get what we think is the story, the narrative we're telling ourselves versus Mm -hmm. what is can often be totally off the mark, you know. So, um, and just that like defensiveness and the reactiveness that water can be, it can really put us on sensitized territory um, as well. Especially like not to say like, yes, all the other water signs do do this, but Scorpio being ruled by Mars has got... You know, it, it will often attack as a form of defense or, you know, it goes into that more warrior, like we're in battle territory here. It's like, no, no, we were just talking. We're not having like, <laughs> <laughs> you're not being attacked and we don't have to go like, but because it's a Mars rule sign, it wants to draw that sword, you know, and with Mercury yeah. there, like words can be weapons, but words can also be, you know, they can also cut away things. They can help you overcome baggage from the past. Yeah. So it's, I think we've got two and a half months. We're all going to get a bit of both sides of, of yeah. Yeah. And then I guess as a healing balm to all of yeah, this, like- um, <laughs> <laughs> while Mercury is in Scorpio for majority of this time, it's looking to Mars in Libra for its support. Yeah. So yes. it is Phew. definitely going to bring, yeah, exactly. So all these things that we have been mentioning around Mercury and Scorpio are likely going to manifest primarily in relationships, um, our collaborations, our friendships, or, you know, even, you know, to some extent, um, the way we experience pleasure, the way we spend our money and all of these kind of things. So um, Mars goes into uh, Libra, uh, a sign of it doesn't like being in there, a uh, mm. sign of detriment. So 4th of um, October, um, and I think it would probably fall uh, the same date very early in the Northern Hemisphere or very yes, late on the third. it's definitely on the 4th in uh, Canada and the States. Yeah, so so there you go, Mars in Libra. So six weeks of that. Uh, Mars in Libra, like, you know, it's not all bad, <laughs> even though technically on paper it's probably not the best. 
But, you know, this is where we can really kind of maybe, you know, fight for relationships or, you know, perhaps take a, a bit of a softer edge to, our, you know, to the way we are asserting ourselves or putting ourselves out there. I remember seeing a tweet like ages ago, maybe a couple of years ago, I can't quite remember who might have even been Chris Brennan, something about like the soldier in the tutu. And I always get this image now yes. of, of that with Mars in Libra. And so it is about, um, and also think about what our first teacher back in Sydney used to talk about this. It's like, you know, the iron fist in the velvet glove. Yeah, and totally. Mars does, Mars does really have, you know, in a roundabout way, some real power in um in Libra, but not doing it in the Martian way. It's like, how can I get what I want and sugarcoat the process? Or how can I want, get what I want and still um, operate with some win-win outcomes? You know, how can I try and uh, get my needs met, which is also like Libra is kind of like, you know, Aries with a pink coat on, right? So how can I get what I want um, without ruffling a whole lot of feathers. So there is a lot of, rather than kind of going head first, Aries, it's a little bit more like, well, I could try this or I could go that way, you know, sum up all the options. So, you know, even though it's a little bit uncomfortable and it might take you a little bit longer to get to that place or get that thing or get that whatever it is that you're desiring, it might be trying to maybe broaden some perspectives, try new um uh, a new MO, if you like, or a new method of operation in order to get your goals or to go what after whatever it is that you're going for. And I think relationships are definitely going to be a key factor with this, um, the communication styles um, and the way to get some kind of harmony or some kind of discourse that's agreeable with all people will be kind of going a little deeper with, you know, that whole uh, Mercury piece, which Libra kind of doesn't like doing. She does like to keep things a little bit on the surface. So it's going to have this double whammy in order to have peace on the whole, you know, like a, um, uh, what do you, they call it in a uh, like, you know, peace in the UN, so to speak, we have to have those tough conversations. We have to, you know, bring out the diplomatic forces, you know, bring come out all guns blazing, but, but not shooting from the hip kind of thing. So I don't mind a good Mars and Libra transit because it can really soften the edge of Mars, but still getting what you want, which is ultimately, you know, what Mars is all about, just taking a different approach. How about you, lovely ladies? What do you think about Mars in Libra? Well, I, it always makes me think about like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he got into politics or for the Australians mm. when, when Peter Garrett, who was a big activist and singer here in Australia, entered politics as well. And it's like the warrior trying to be in a diplomatic situation. The short, sharp directness that Mars is used to and, of course, would need on the battlefield can't happen without wounding yeah. or hurting or annoying people. And for Peter Garrett mm. here, you know, he went in all guns blazing for environmental change and, and sustainability and got so frustrated with the fact that it couldn't happen. And so yeah. he left. Whereas Arnie Schwarzenegger has kind of learnt to play the game and learnt to play along. And so it is mm. that, you know, well, which way can this go? Will we just get frustrated and um, bow out or will we be able to keep going with this and keep pushing with this? And... Interestingly, like I just had a look, you know, Mars leaves Libra exactly the same day that um, the Mercury goes direct again. So the two of them literally will be together in that time. Mm. So it is like, okay, well, how can these deep Mercury and Scorpio thoughts inform the charming diplomatic connections we're trying to make, but as you were saying, Cass, to create really good change and it's mm. like... Anyone who's a good activist these days knows that you have to, you know, break bread with people that you may not necessarily agree with, but so you can make connections and get change to happen. Um, so that's kind of my feeling of it all. It's like, yeah, how can we actually put some energy and motion into what, sorry, there's a chat going on at the moment. Um, into, yeah, making connections, building bridges to try to keep the overall picture of peace and equality and fairness. 
What and I do you, love the Arnold Schwarzenegger like analogy because yep. I love Arnie and I do like he can be all Aries in the Terminator and he can do that really well mm. but he can't really be the Terminator and the kindergarten cop. So that's like the Mars in Libra version where he's got to um, still get to the, you know, you still get the bad guys, Mars, but try to facilitate all these children and all these things yeah. at the same time. And it's really yeah. awkward. It's really uncomfortable, but the outcome can still be um, positive. And that's ultimately what Libra wants. She does want that win-win. She does want mm. that happy outcome for everybody. But it's just a little bit awkward in the process sometimes when we're dealing with Mars. Totally. But I think he's quite respected. I don't know, actually. I'm a little bit, but from my feeling was that I he's quite so. respected now for mm. what he's been able to do in California yeah. and the energy yeah. he's been able to put into change there. But our US listeners can let us know what they think. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. What, what about, about you, Kel? Kel? <laughs> um, I'm just like thinking about all these things. Uh, yeah, there. I mean, there is that misfit between Mars wanting to kind of fight and get things done and be an independent player and then, you know, in Libra, which is we've got to collaborate, we've got to form alliances or, or teams. But the other thing that struck me was this is a little bit like last week, you know, where the sun went from Virgo to Libra in the sense that there is a softening because Virgo is a very dry earth sign. Mars is a dry planet, but in Libra, there is a little bit of moisture here. So mm. th there is that sense of we can try to find a diplomatic solution or to compromise. I also think with Mars in Libra, there's this desire to find a way to have the individual represented in the partnership or in the, the collective or in the collaboration. It's sort of that interplay or that relationship between where is I, where is me, where is us, or where is this thing we're working on. And it may just highlight, you know, we're all in service to this one thing, but do we need to kind of just adjust expectations? Um, there is, yeah, obviously very diplomatic there's a sweetness. Um, I don't want to say there's a sweetness to Mars. Mars is learning about how to work with others. You know, it's like a headstrong kid in the playground that's being told you have to play with this other person, figure out a way to do it kind of thing. You know, you can't just exclude. So, and then the other thing I always think about with Mars when it's in uh, potentially like its detriment or its fall sign is that we do sometimes see warriors or advocates emerge who are going to speak up, you know, fight for the underdog or to advocate, you know, on behalf of people that are marginalized or ostracized in society in some way. And Mars is only in each sign every two years. And it was like October, November 2017 was the last time we had Mars in Libra. Um, and I'm thinking about people the two, actually, the, the two people that came to my mind immediately, like, who do I know that's got Mars in Libra? You know, that's a well-known person. Um, Prince William, who's done a lot of work for mental health uh, initiatives, which I, you know, keep in mind, this is Mars in an air sign. We need to talk about and think about what's going on in our mind. How does Mars maybe disturb or disrupt our normal thinking patterns and our normal communication patterns? And the other person is um, Alec. Xandra Ocasio Cortez, the mm. new um, you know politician coming out of the New York area, and not to say that either of those people are perfect, but they each do have some very specific missions, you know, that they're trying to achieve in terms of highlighting particularly disadvantaged portions in society, if you like. Um, and then the other person, once you started talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm like, oh, yeah, Maria Shriver has Mars in Libra and <laughs> that's a bit of an issue around relationships for her, but that's like a topic for another day. But yeah. I think one thing to be cautious of with Mars in Libra, you know, when I work with clients with this placement, Mars in Libra is not very good at advocating for the needs of the individual. It's very mm -hmm. good at fighting for the underdog. You know, even Maria Shriver has done a lot of work with, um, people with different abilities, like uh, the Paralympics and things like that. Uh, you know, I don't know about her personal life, but I know with the clients I work with, Mars and Libra has a lot of trouble saying, I want, I need, yep. and it has a lot yep. of trouble saying no. So, you know, just keep in mind that whilst all well and good to collaborate, collaboration works when it doesn't go against your own core boundaries or values, basically. And that's where the negotiation comes in. Like, how can we get to something that we both agree with that we're all staying in integrity around? Yeah.
And that's where the upcoming squares to Saturn and Pluto will give us the opportunities to do that. Yes. So much to look forward <laughs> to um, in through- October. <laughs> I know, through this transit. So I guess that's pretty much the uh, highlights of the week, wasn't it? That's, yeah, I think that's plenty to chew over for this week. It's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit quieter this week. So, I mean, we definitely have a shift of pace with both Mercury and Mars changing signs. So um, with that, what have you girls got happening at the moment that you might like to share with some of our listeners? I've got to check my calendar. (laughs) <laughs> I know, it's like that. We're recording yeah. quite a bit in advance at the moment, so it's almost like we decided to do this a little bit early and here we are. You're like, oh, that's right. What are we doing at, you know, weeks from now? Yeah, so. I've got um, – I'm just going to be coming home this week from Demetra's retreat and diving back into client consults. That's what's on for me at the end of this week. So a bit yeah. of travel uh, and a bit of planning because Tony and I will have a few days together after the retreat where we'll be setting up some fun stuff for 2020. So nothing to um, share with you this week. Sorry. <laughs> what about, <laughs> How about you, Alicia? I don't have anything planned yet. Um, I am <laughs> thinking about doing a webinar on midlife transits, but I don't know if it'll be this week or the next. So, um, yeah, maybe subscribe to my website if you want to be kept up to date with that one. That's a great point. Get on all the newsletters. Yes. That's it. Yes. Um, yes. And for me, well, yeah, I'm in the same boat, Lishi. I'm still yet to decide. It's like, hello, Mars and Libra. Um, yes. I'm still yes. yet to decide what I may be doing in that first week of October. But, uh, yeah, uh, sign up to the newsletter and find out. So, Awesome, girls. Well, thanks for joining us and please feel free to uh, like our uh, stuff, whether it's on your favourite podcast uh, app or on YouTube, and please leave us some comments. How are these aspects playing out for you? Share your experiences and let us know what you're thinking of the astrology of this week. So until next week, it's bye for now. Bye. Bye.